it's Karen from Lion Gate Farm and today I am going to teach you how to make the cutest little star snowman ornaments. For today we're going to make this fun star snowman ornament. Super fun. There's so many variations you can do especially when you're dressing him. This one is done in snow white which is what we're going to do today but I want to show you some other variations. This guy right here, see his all his sparkles? I don't know if you can see that. I hope you can. That is done in this um, crystal sparkle, merino crystal sparkle. And then this guy is done in the merino Stellina silver sparkle. And notice he's a little smaller. We'll talk about that. And then you can dress them different ways. This guy has some tinsel, some tinsel and some little earmuffs here. So again, it devils in the details. I have, we're gonna do this red plaid piece of fabric scarf that I tore, some green buttons. I have one of these little purchased hats and we'll get going. So what you need is a decent amount of core wool. We're gonna use two kinds. I have roving form and then I have my favorite go-to which felt faster than anything and then um, a little bit of black for his mouth a little bit you don't need this much tiny bit of pink for his cheeks or you can use blush you need a ruler and 16 gauge wire I wouldn't go any smaller than that um, if you went smaller than that it won't be strong enough to hold together. We're going to make this frame. It's kind of unwieldy. You see it moves around. Um, but I'll show you the fastest way to make it. And my cat's meowing because he's trying to get Cannon's attention. Okay. <laughs> so you have a little punctuation in there. So 16 gauge wire. I buy mine on this huge roll. And the first thing you're going to do is you're gonna make a bend before you cut anything. I want you to make about a half an inch bend. Just kind of squeeze it, don't squeeze it all the way down. So that's right there. And then we're gonna go five inches and we're gonna bend it. Okay, we're making a star. Then we're gonna go five and a half inches and we're gonna bend it. You know, I had a diagram all drawn out but this is the way I do it so I want you guys to see how I do it so then this curve right here starts at five and a half inches so I'm just just curve it over unwind some more and you see my star happening here right it's unwieldy at first so remember we gotta go five and a half inches I never worry if one leg is longer than the other because, you know, hey, it's an ornament. It gives it character. And now we're going to go back up to this corner. Just kind of go up there, go a little bit past it. It's approximately 29 inches. I actually did measure it. If you want to cut your wire first, I just do it this way. All right. So we've cut our wire and we have this almost star shape. So what's going to happen next is we're going to kind of even it out. Hey, if I go off camera, I'm sorry. I push this around mostly because of my neck. I'm kind of like evening it out. You know, I was doing this and I'm like, oh, look at my gingerbread men too. That might be kind of fun. So I'm going to come to there and I'm going to make another bend. And then I'm going to slide that on. So we got that on. Don't Again, don't worry too much if it's not. They're not perfectly even. And now I'm going to squeeze this side. Squeeze that nice and tight. Don't worry about twisting it. We don't need it twisted. Squeeze that nice and tight. Now, let's make it look like a star. This is his head. I like this to be skinny. So I squeeze this down, squeeze it down there. Pretty even. Squeeze this end down. We'll get there. 
Okay, now, kind of bend it back out just a little because I just want the pointy parts squeezed. Now, you can see it's still wiggly. There's not really anything we can do about that. If you, if you wanted to, you could put floral tape, but we're just going to do it with core wool. Um, and after he's done, you can still move him around and pose him. So don't even worry about that too much, about where the legs end up. So the first thing we're going to do is take a little bit of core wool, just a little bit. The joint that I like to secure first is this one right here. And all I do is wrap this around here a little bit. Not a lot. I don't want too much bulk in there. And then I just stab it a little bit. It's gonna all get covered up so it doesn't have to be pretty. Hey, no coming apart. See, it'll still move around even until we get so then all right that looks pretty even and we're gonna take another little piece of core wool and same thing we're just gonna kind of wrap it around this little joint area you know you could probably do this without a frame it just goes so much faster when you have a frame to wrap on. And this is pretty simple once you get it secured. So that should hold it pretty good. You can see things aren't moving so much anymore that we did those two. So now, I'll put this aside. I'm going to use this kind of core wool that's a roving first. And I'm just going to tear off a random piece. And we're just gonna wrap. Don't pull tight because it will bend your frame in. Just kind of go around it. Let's tear a piece off and secure it in here. All we're doing is covering, giving the frame a little cover at this point. Don't need my ruler anymore. Well, maybe I do, just to tell you how big this is. I forgot. So his head ends up being about two inches tall, about inch and three quarters wide. If you're wondering how much should stick out. I had drawn out a whole frame for you to trace with the wire and then I tried to do it. I'm like, oh gosh, that is, it's easier just to measure it and bend it at the same time. Your two measurements are five inches and then five and a half all the way around. I suppose you could do five and a half all the way around, even the first one, but I like it with five. Personal preference. And they don't have to be this big. See, this guy's a little mini guy. I did a mini frame just to see if it would work and it came out pretty cute. All right, so we got that head part wrapped. Now we're gonna wrap. Just wrap in here. You can go across, because we need to start filling this in a little bit. Go across, tack it in. We can't wrap tight yet, and you know how much I like to wrap tight, so I don't have to poke as much. We need the frame to maintain its integrity. I've done it a couple different ways, trying to figure out the best way to show you. And there is no best way. It's just whatever works for you. I've wrapped all the legs first. I tried that, the head. And then I had a big gap in the middle. I like to throw stuff out here in the middle. Because if you save that for last, it 
it's it's just kind of a, a pain. So just let your extra go out there and it'll fill in our star. Uh, now when you're poking, be mindful of the wire. I bent a couple needles doing this because I wasn't paying attention. So go down. Don't worry about covering that point up quite yet. We'll get to that. Remember, oops, now see, I pulled too tight. Saw what happened there. Because I like to wrap tight, and that's what happened. Gentle. I'm using a 38 star. Um, there's two 38 star spirals in my pin tool. I know that was a question last time. What needle am I using? Um, for this part, you could use a 36 if you want. I just don't hardly ever use a 36. I just go to the 38 because I know I won't have to switch. It just takes me all the way through the project. this end. Oh, my dog is probably going to bark here. Oh, he didn't. Mailman. Ripley's to bark at the mailman. You didn't hear him. <laughs> I'm just going to wrap a little bit more. I'm not worrying about going all the way to the end. I'm just trying to cover all this wire up. Get that covered up. The end will not stick out, I promise, when we're done. Okay, so now I'm going to switch to my handy dandy, trusty, normal core wool. Why? Because, see how this doesn't felt super fast. I have to poke this a lot. Um, this is a, what am I using? I can't even remember what kind of wool this is. Something I have in a box in there. All right, done with that. Move this out of the way. So now I have my regular core wool. It sometimes comes in pieces, sometimes comes in bat form. Now, this I'm going to do in smaller pieces because I don't want these too fat. Remember, we're still going to put a coating on these. I'll show you the one we're doing. Okay, we're still going to put white on top of this. So, see how his leg's longer? That's okay. Um, we're going to make these arms a little... I, now, I work arm to leg to arm to head. I do the head last. Just like we're wrapping anything. You can go a little bit tighter, but remember, you can still compromise your frame. We're making cones here. Cone shape. Skinnier out here, fatter in here. Doesn't take more than one wrap, usually. But you can see how much faster this stuff felt. Go out just a hair past your end. Don't worry about felting that all the way in yet. You can probably hear me hitting the wires. So let's do his leg. A couple wraps around the top. I'm going to run out and have to get some more. Since I'm wrapping down here, I got less. Remember, we want it to come be, be a cone. Skinny here, wider up here. Remember to felt on both sides of your armature. So you got that leg. Try and keep them 
even. I got a lump right there where I spotted. You want a nice even cone. The smoother that your little cones are in here, the smoother your top coat will go on. probably hear me hitting the wire every now and then. Now if you realize that one is smaller than the other, you can extend it if if it bugs you, if you, you know, it doesn't bug me. They're supposed to be whimsical little snowman ornaments. It gives them character. Okay, I've got one more leg down here. Try and make sure like they're similar in size. Width wise, it doesn't matter. Remember, you're the only one that knows what it was supposed to look like. Notice I'm not felting it super hard. It's still pretty squishy. I'm gonna poke some of this back in. It's slipping, it's slipping way down. Next spot we're gonna do is this head up here. I just have this nice little piece of core wool. I'm just gonna coat it over around his head. I am gonna pull this a hair tighter. I love making snowmen and I love making pumpkins because they're kind of mindless. We'll do a, a regular snowman pretty soon because I've, I've developed a, a nifty little armature. Your snowman will not fall over. And it's so simple, it's crazy. See, I added a little piece to cover the top wire. All right, so now we've got we got a little hole right here. This is I haven't decided what's the front and what's the back yet. So I'm just gonna take a little piece of core wool, fill this in. Let's make a little pillow. I've got a piece of fishing line. Here, I'm gonna stick it in him um, for when we make his hanger. Let's just fill this in. And we need to do a little piece. Now, I don't know how fat you want to make them. How you can make them super fat. Mine aren't very, they have a little belly. And then the backside's more flat. But most of them have a little belly. So that's when you decide which is the front and which is the back. I'm pretty sure what I'm working on right this second is the back. Because I don't have a lot of fiber here. Again, be careful when you're in this middle section. You got wires that cross all over the place. 
It's a good way to break a needle if you hit it too hard or bend one. So you're just gonna sit here and poke away until he gets all nice and smooth. You may have to add some as you go, you know, just like a little piece here to join this all together, but you're just gonna poke until this is all nice and smooth. And it's probably gonna take you a good 20 minutes to get all this core wool worked into your project. So I'll be back in a minute. Don't wanna make you watch all my poking. All right, so I've been felting on this guy for 20 minutes, half an hour. See, I got him pretty smooth and firm. His little points are as good as I can get them. But you see why I squished that wire in so we can keep these points. So now we're going to cover him with the snow. This is D snow is the name of this color. It's on my website. Um, it's by DHG. It comes in big bats that I have to rip apart into portions for you. And we're just going to cover this guy. Now, tip. When you're covering core wool with white, sometimes it's helpful to walk outside after you're done. I know that sounds totally crazy. And make sure you covered the whole thing. Because after a while, you cannot... It like all blends together and you can't see if you missed a spot. Um, it's weird. It's really, really weird how you think you've got it all. And then you walk outside and you're like, wow, there's some spots I missed. So when you're working with white over core wool, it's really easy to have a spot that you missed. I love this DHG, um, stuff. It felt so fast and so smooth, but it does have bits of someone's farm in it from Italy somewhere. That's where it comes from. Uh, it's a fun little, I have like 26 colors of this stuff on the website. I have a love-hate relationship with it because it's not like roving where you can just divide it into one ounce packages. No, you have to rip these bats apart. And whew, it's a fuzzy mess. But it felt so good. You can see how nice and smooth it's already coming out. So I'm going to sit here and then... So on his arms and legs... I guess this could be a snow person. On its arms and legs... I think this is the one... You know, whatever side looks the smoothest... I think this is going to be the front on this guy. I like to do the tips first. Like just go through and do all four tips. So you got that one. Don't even worry if you don't get it all. You just want the very tip felted in. Why do I do this? Well, remember what I just said about taking it outside? <laughs> when first couple test subjects, this is where I was most likely to miss with the white by just wrapping it on there. So I took to doing this part first. Because then I can just happily wrap away. Now I have to worry about this all being felted in. I'm just taking off little bits. Let's do this one. Just make sure it's thick enough so that you can't see through it. If you're using any of the sparkle ones, definitely do this first because that stuff, it's hard to felt in because it's a merino base. Okay, so now we're going to go through and coat each appendage. It's kind of like making the starfish, kind of, different armature than I did on the starfish.
We're going to go through and you're just going to coat the whole thing in white. And you're going to walk outside. Hopefully it's daytime. It won't work if it's nighttime. Or under a really bright light. Um, and try and make sure that you got everything. Lots of wires in there. Okay, so I'm going to keep working on this. It's going to take you another 20 minutes. Get this all covered, and then I'll come back. Okay, I've been working on this guy a bit. Now, I've got him all covered, I think. I haven't walked outside. But what I'm going to do now is maintain the integrity of the points. So using my single needle, I'm coming down here, and I'm going to just make sure this is nice and felted in. So this is thinner area than the top. And then I'm going to check and make sure, hopefully, I don't have any spots that I missed. But I'm just going back through, making sure it's nice and smooth everywhere. Working my way around. I think I got it pretty good here. Now, we can put, let's, let's make him into a, a personality. So... I think I brought glue. I did bring glue. But didn't bring scissors, so I'm going to poke it. We're going to put his nose. I usually take scissors and make a little snip. We can talk about nose first. All right, I take a whole... This is Fimo clay. And I will take a whole pack at a time of Fimo clay. And make all different size noses for all different size snowmen. And I bake them all at one time. So then I have a whole Ziploc of noses. So then I just go in and pick a nose that will fit. So you see I poked a spot where his nose is going to go. So this is E6000 Quick Hold. Um, it's not as quick as I would like. It's not as fast as... It's stinky too. Um, it's not as fast as super glue. But there we got his nose in. All right. Phews. I was gluing something for a while the other day. We were like, holy moly, that is stinky stuff. Okay, so his nose is in. So now we can figure out where his mouth is going to go. And to be honest, I normally use my hot glue gun. But I don't want to take you into that room because it is a mess. The table has all kinds of trinkets all over it. So I'm poking in his mouth. And then where his eyes are going to go. Yeah, you can put them as close together as you want. I like to make pretty small. So we're going to use just a small amount of fibers, roll them in a ball. Let's do his eyes first. So one's going to go there. One's going to go here. If you move your, if you roll your needle around, it'll catch all the stray fibers. I have a pet peeve about having extra black fibers on top of the white personal pet peeve. Try and make sure they're the same size. Poke around. If you didn't firm up your head enough, well, I like that his head's on a, it's on a tilt. And then you just need very few fibers for his mouth. Very few. You don't want to use too many because then his mouth will be too thick. So we're going to put them in. I might need a little bit more. I think I might need a little bit more. Stay. 
don't come undone. I kind of roll them in my fingers first. This might be too much. We'll see. It's just right. Get them all poked in. Little trick, once you get the mouth poked in, you can poke towards his mouth if you get to make it nice and even. Now I need some cheeks. I don't know why I like to put pink cheeks on everything. This is the color Hollyhock. I use it a lot. And I'm poking on cheeks. You can use blush. Just a small amount that you can kind of see through. You don't want to do too much because you just want it to be a little hint of pink. Maybe a little hint a little more. Until it looks right. So he's got that going on. I have a black fiber up here that's going to bug me. Take your time with the face. The faces are what makes your item. So the next thing I'm going to do is we're going to poke where his buttons are going to go. I brought three little jingle bell buttons. And I'm going to poke a hole. These guys have a little shank on them, and I'm going to stick that shank in the hole once I have glue on it. Open my stinky glue again. you got to be careful with this glue because it likes to come out all on its own. I was gl gluing something the other day, and I ended up with a whole bunch on the floor accidentally. Just sticking the little shank in the hole. I definitely don't want it on my felting pad. Ah, don't quick hold to my finger. I like these jingle bells because they actually make noise. Okay, now we're going to glue his hat on. So before we glue his hat on, you can see his face is kind of tilted, so that means his hat goes over here. You need to make sure if you're putting this kind of hat on him, or any kind of hat really, this is flat. So that you get more room, more adhered on there. And glue this on, put a bunch of glue up here. Stinky, stinky. All right, now we'll put his hat on. I'm going to hold this here for a second. He's coming out pretty cute. And then this is just, you can buy little quilting strips of fabric that are like two inches wide. This is like a little pack of Christmas. Just gonna hoping that quick hold holds a little quicker. I'm just gonna tie it around his neck. Having technical difficulties. All right, so now I got it tied around his neck. Now what I normally do, oh quick hold is not holding quick. Stay in there. What I normally do is I'll take my glue gun and make a little strip of glue and scrunch his fabric up on both sides. So scrunchy, scrunchy. So there you have it.
one little star snowman. Oh, there's one thing I didn't do yet. Not so sure about this quick hold glue holding quickly. I have some 15 pound test fishing lines threaded on this doll needle. And I'm just gonna go right through his head. <laughs> this is subjective as to how I need only one end of it. Pull one end through. This is how I string all my ornaments up with fishing line. Sometimes I use twine and then you're gonna just tie a knot in however long you want it. So he'll be hanging. There you have it. Oh, one non quick hold button. <laughs> I'm gonna go in to the glue gun and I'm going to re-glue these. Um, there you have it though. One star snowman ornament. I hope you have fun with this. Show me on the Langate Farm Facebook page. I want to see. Thanks for joining me today, making our little star snowman ornament. If you liked our video, click like and make sure you follow us because it really helps us out. If you need supplies, head over to liongate.org, go in the farm store. All the colors I use are there and join our Facebook page. Show me what you make.